All right. Welcome, everyone. Ron Bernier, BaseballSimResearch.com. Uh, tonight, we're going to go over the NPNG Plus Board Reader Stats Package, and we're going to go ahead and create, uh, assuming everything goes well, create a Standings tab. All right. So my 1979 National League uh, NPNG Plus Replay, which um, the entire replay is basically based on testing the new score sheet feature. Um, I was messing with some stats, et cetera, and decided I was going to build a standings tab. So over here, uh, on the standings tab, right, we've already got everything done for the standings. So um, this scores stuff here, I'm actually just adding that stuff manually, nothing programmatically adding, uh, creating that yet. But I want to show you how to set up your own standings page. So we're going to go ahead and add a new uh Add a new worksheet, and we're going to call it uh, rename new standings. Boom. All right. So the first thing we're going to look at is adding um, headers for the division, the wins, losses, percentage, game behind. And I'm going to put a spare column in between the east and the west, and I'm going to show you why here in a minute. So uh, let's see, east. So team name, wins, losses, percentage, games behind, a blank space, West, uh, West team, wins, losses, percentage, games behind, another blank space, but that's not going to be included. So I'm going to go ahead and just merge these. Um, you might uh, not be familiar with Excel. That's okay. Um, we'll just go through some stuff here. So I'm going to say 1970 and PNG plus replay. And I'm going to bump that font up just to make it look nice bold. All right, so we've got the East uh, division wins, losses, the percentage, games behind, and we got West uh, wins, losses, percentage, games behind. Um, we're going to talk a little bit here about getting the games behind right. I'm just going to center some stuff and make it look, look better here. All right, so that gives us our headers, and now we're going to have to type in the team. So in the East, uh, no, we don't have Atlanta in the East. In the East, we have Chicago, uh, Montreal, New York, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, St. Louis. And, of course, in the West, now we have Atlanta. Uh, let's see, Cincinnati. Houston, Los Angeles, and San Diego, and San Francisco. So now that we know that how wide each of these team columns has to be, um, this one's 12. We're going to go ahead and make it 15 and just to make it look better. And we're going to make, of course, the east column the same width. Um, you'll see these headers here, right, with that formatting. I'm going to go ahead and try anyway to copy that formatting over here. All right, there we go. So you can do standings one of two ways in your stats. You can either type in wins, losses, like the numbers, and then do percentages and games behind separately. Let's get rid of this. Or you can link. So Chicago, if I could, you know, spell I guess technically type so this uh, we're gonna actually use formulas right equals Chicago wins Montreal equal Montreal wins so all we're doing here is linking uh, creating a formula which looks at the tab for each of the teams and pulls the wins into uh, into the standings page and since the uh, losses are the next column over, um, I think it's the next column over. Let's take a look. The way I did them, B165, C165. Yep. So now that we've got wins there, we can just control C, copy, paste, and now we've got our wins and our losses. We're going to go ahead and center these. Percentage is pretty simple. Wins divided by games. Um, you've got some times that 
you're going to have two decimal places, one decimal place, 5,000 decimal places, or you're going to have those leading pesky leading zeros. So let's do this. Equal this divided by sum of these two, right? 333, boom, all the way down. And as you can see, those are pretty ugly percentages. So what we do is we format, uh, let's see, right click. It's easy to do this way. Format cells, we're going to say a number. Actually, we're going to say custom. And we're going to do 0, 0, 0.000. What that means is if there is a non-zero there, sorry, pound dot zero zero zero. That way, if there's a number in front of the decimal, it'll display. Otherwise, it won't display. Boom, 400, 167, 1,000. Center those. Boom. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and before we do the games behind, let's go ahead and uh, we highlight what we want to sort. In this particular table, we go to data tab. We sort by percentage in descending order. Boom. All the teams are there. So games behind, you can't just go down here to Montreal and figure out the games behind versus St. Louis because games behind is based on a calculation of the number of games above or below 500 divided by two. So if we're 4-0, we're four games above 500. If another team is 5-0, they're five games above 500 and we're a half game behind. Half game means either if we win or if the other team loses, we'll be the same number of games above 500. So this calculation is wins minus losses. It's games above 500. Boom. So now obviously Pittsburgh is going to be four games behind. They're a minus four. St. Louis is a plus four. Um, that's four games behind. I'm going to go cheat a little bit. Uh, yeah, so this is the formula. Oh, yeah, because 4 minus negative 4 is 8, and we divide that by 2. So um, the max numbers, the max number of games above 500 is the team that you're going to calculate against. So here, um, games behind, if we are the max, then we want to just put a hyphen there, right? So equal if um, this number equal max of all these numbers, then we're going to put a hyphen, else we're going to put xxxxx. And we get a hyphen. We're going to go ahead and center all these as well, and we're actually going to put in two hyphens there because it just looks better. Now, the problem here is we can't just copy those games behind down, because if we do, you'll notice that it's going to be the maximum number, because as we copy it down, since the F3 to F8 is what's called relative cell addressing, when we move down to here, um, when we move down to here, it changes to F4 to F9. So to fix that, we have to set this to absolute so row three and row eight of column F to absolute. And then when we copy it down, everybody else except for St. Louis should be, there we go, triple X's. So now the next thing is we have to figure out the calculation, right? So instead of triple X, if we want to figure out the max of the max of that column, right? So the calculation is the max of that minus how many games we are above 500, which in this case is in cell wherever we are, where we have four. But we're going to take that number and divide it by two. Now, the reason we got to put parentheses in there, if you remember back in grade school, um, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So we have to figure out the max of that column minus F4 and then divide that sum by 2 to get our number. If we do max of that minus F4 divided by 2, then we're actually going to get uh, 4 minus 1.5, which we're going to end up with like something in three quarters games behind, which is silly. So half a game behind, we're going to actually go ahead and copy that 
all the way down here. Now we have standings, right? Um, we're going to format these numbers. We're going to add uh, one. So there we go. So now Montreal is a half game behind. Uh, New York is two and a half behind because they're two back in the win column, three back in the loss column. One of the weird things very early in your um, very early in your replay, the replay that can happen is you can have a team with a higher higher percentage but it's still games behind because again, it calculates off this number games above or below 500. So if we suddenly go to six and six and one with Montreal and St. Louis doesn't play, suddenly now we're five games above 500. Therefore in the games behind, we're actually in quote unquote first, even though our percentage is lower, right? So these calculations here, I wanna go ahead and hide that so that it doesn't display. Now the percentages and the games behind and the calculations, I can copy all of those formulas right over here, right? And we get division by zero. So let's go ahead and update this, um, this formula to do that division by zero. So instead of getting there, so if we can say if the sum of B3 to C3, right? Is zero, then put three hyphens, else do that formula that we had. Boom, we get the same numbers, we copy it down. We now copy these over here. If we haven't played a game, our percentage will show as three hyphens. So uh, just some weird things that really drive me nuts about spreadsheets that I see people uh, send to me. Um, you know, batting averages with a leading zero winning percentages with a leading zero, division by zero, errors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I try to make sure all of these, um, all of these display characteristics look nice regardless of what the data is. So now let's go ahead and fill in uh, all the other wins and losses here. Uh, Atlanta, Cincinnati, Houston, Los Angeles, San Diego, and obviously you can do this for, you know, any spreadsheet. Um, it doesn't have to be in this spreadsheet. This will work everywhere naturally. Um, so there's those. We're going to go ahead and center those wins and losses again. Now we're going to select um, this table. We're going to go back to sort. We're going to say sort by percentage from largest to smallest, and there are our standings. Another cool thing that I didn't know up until this week, um, if I highlight uh, range in Excel and I copy, I hit Control C or I edit paste or hit the 8,000 different ways that you can do this. And then I actually paste it into paint, paste in as a graphic, which is kind of cool now. Uh, the other thing that I do to make sure that it looks a little bit better in my graphics is I click off grid lines. All right, so now when I take this and I paste that into here, this looks pretty nice, right? Um, you know, you can cut and paste that into your posts on the forum, whatever you want to do. Um, so that is standings in the board reader. Uh, sorry, it's not standings in the board readers. Standings in the board readers stats package. Um, I will probably go ahead and put this in as an example. Um, in the released one, what I will do is I will put like team name here and I will put in a single tick here. And that's equal, you know, team name tab, team name tab underscore uh, print or exclamation Pitcher wins. Oh, whatever. Yeah, the old demo gods. You know what I mean. And that'll uh, that'll go and just display in the cell, and that way you can um, fix things. Yeah, another. See, another one. Uh, this game's behind when people put in the wrong stuff. Here we could do um, if. Error of that, 
and put uh, we want two hyphens as well. Else, we're going to go ahead and put this formula back in as the results. I think. Yeah. Anyway, you can add that in later. I'll probably have it figured out by the time we release this. Um, so that's how you do standings tabs. So um, national pastime, great game. Bill Middleton's done a wonderful job creating an absolutely free baseball sim. And just because it's free doesn't mean that it sucks. All right. In fact, it doesn't. It fixes a lot of things from the national pastime engine that APA still um, could have refined a little bit further, at least for some people's tastes. Uh, APA is still a great game, but, you know, sometimes we like to refine it a little bit more. So www.ntlpt, that's nationalpastime.com um, for National Pastime Next Generation. My website, www.baseballsimresearch.com, where you can get all sorts of free downloads for um, getting ready to do your as played replays, um, et cetera. So there's all sorts of data there on player usage. There's all sorts of data there on lineups, uh, all sorts of cool stuff. And if you donate and help uh, help me defray the costs of the running the website, then you'll get at least uh, one season of my transactions research too, which you know no, nobody's transactions are perfect, but uh, mine are pretty good. Um, I'm pretty anal retentive, and I try to get everything as close to correct as possible. Um, so those are the websites. That's how to do a standings tab. Hopefully um, you learned a little something from this. Take care.